Um, oh, is it Wood there? Springsteen. <laughs> Look, I did a lot of things. I lived a lot of adventures. Asbury Park, Texas. That's where that. Let's just take a moment is. to remember that Bruce Springsteen is 65 years old. Dude, so is my he dad. He can't Whatever. survive. <laughs> Six. Oh, wait, that's horrible. I seen that. <laughs> he can't survive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're ready to go. You ready to go? Um, ready to go away. I'm trying to log into Cord Killer. Okay. Yeah, this is the wrong show. This is Daily Tech News Show, right? Well, I mean, it's still at irc.cordkillers.com. <laughs> oh, that that is correct. You're right. Right. All right. Uh, I'm all right. ready, sir. Let's do here, this. Here we go. At the end of the day, making free content doesn't come cheap. Show your support for the independent content you're listening to right now at patreon.com. Oops. At the end of the day, ma- I'm going to start that over again. Here we yeah, go. That was, that was going so strong. It was really, really good. Take until two. It wasn't. At the end of the day, making free content doesn't come cheap. Show your support for the independent content you're listening to right now at patreon.com slash ace detect. That's patreon.com forward slash A-C-E. D T E C T. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, September 24th, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today uh, is Brian Brushwood, host of Scam School, Night Attack, and Cord Killers with me. How's it going, Brian? Hey, man. Dude, it's good to be here. I feel a bit overwhelmed. I, I, I It's not often that I get asked to uh, be respectful, uh, respectable, or know what I'm talking about. I prefer cord killers where I could just go off half cocked. <laughs> you could say, you could just say any crazy thing. Well, let me give you a uh, carte blanche. Say whatever you want. Uh, look, whatever. man, I think all phones should be bent by force and it should be a law. We will get to that topic and we will dive into why Brian thinks that after the headlines. <laughs> Good tease, huh? Hey, watch out Google X. Reuters reports Amazon will increase staff at its Lab 126 R&D division by at least 27% over the next five years. That's according to a tax agreement reached with the state of California in June. Among the projects that they'll be researching, sources told Reuters that areas of research at the lab include wearable devices, connected home devices, and one of those connected home devices would allow one-button product ordering from the kitchen over Wi-Fi. Products like the Kindle e-reader and Fire Phone came out of Lab 126. All right. Maybe this is just me, but it's like every time I hear Amazon and a product, I, I always link it to like so they can sell crap. Like as soon as the Twitch got sold to Amazon, I remember thinking like, oh, great. No, every time I tune into a StarCraft match, it'll try to sell me StarCraft or whatever. And uh, that's not so extraordinary. What's extraordinary to me is how, how on earth from a PR perspective – did Google manage to avoid this stigma? Because every time I hear Amazon doing anything, I immediately think, so they can sell us crap. But for some reason, I don't think that about Google, and yet Google's in the exact same business. They're the ad sellers. They're, their whole money-making empire is based on selling ads. Well, and I think a lot of people do have that reaction to Google. When The difference is Amazon sells you something and then ships it to you themselves in most cases, right? And so you make a direct connection. Amazon wants to actually sell something and send it to me. Google, on the other hand, has been a little more insidious because they're just selling ads. But they, I think a lot of people have the reaction when they see Google do something of, yeah, Google just wants my information so they can sell me ads. I hear that a lot from people. Yeah. Well, well done, Google. <laughs> the uh, next web reports BlackBerry unveiled its Square Passport smartphone today. Passport has a 4.5-inch 1440 by 1440 resolution display because it's Square. A 2.2 gigahertz quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 processor, 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs onboard storage, 13 megapixel camera on the back, 2 megapixel on the front. And the phone runs BlackBerry 10.3 and features the brand new BlackBerry Blend, which allows users to manage files and communications across devices even other platforms like Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Phones available now cost $599 in the U.S., $699 Canadian, £529 sterling in the U.K., and $649 euros in Europe. <laughs> There's so many things I want to say. Like, I want to make a hip-to-be-square joke from the 1980s, or I want to say how adorable physical keyboards are. But what I really want to know from you, Tom, is 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 this thing still alive just based on its encryption and security? Because I know that that's a big part of it. Of yeah. Its- 
leading up to this. Definitely. I mean, what John Chen, CEO of BlackBerry, is trying to do here is appeal to the base, saying, please don't leave. Look at what we have for you. This is not a phone meant to convert people, at least not yet. We have a really interesting email from Rich from lovely Cleveland uh, that we'll get to later in the show. He's got a theory about what Chen might be up to that could shed some light on this. But yeah, this is this is just BlackBerry trying to save its base at this point. Doing their BlackBerry thing. The Verge reports Apple says they received reports of an issue with the iOS 8.01 update, are actively investigating those reports, and have actually pulled the update for the time being. 8.0.1 was the first bug fix update to iOS 8. These first patches notoriously cause unexpected problems. Sometimes they get pulled. Most of the time they don't, though, so this is a little more serious than usual. This time, affected phones showed no service, and Touch ID was unresponsive after the update. The issue seemed to only affect iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus, though. Uh, the best workaround, if you have a 6 and you did already update would be to downgrade to iOS 8. You can search downgrade to iOS 8 for several tutorials. Uh, Mac Rumors has one, 9 to 5 Mac, the next web. We'll link to the next web one in our uh, in our show notes. But uh, you, you probably want to downgrade and wait for them to reissue that update. Recode reports Comcast filed its response to comment on its proposed merger with Time Warner Cable. Comcast told the US FCC that Netflix Dish Network and Discovery, among others, opposed the deal because the companies failed in, quote, extortion attempts to get special favors. Yeah, Comcast actually used the word extortion once and extortionate demands twice in the real filing. Discovery and Comcast uh, responded by saying they uh, they continued to intim intimidate opposing voices. Discovery said that about Comcast. And Netflix said... Quote, it is extortion when Comcast fails to provide its own customers the broadband speed they've paid for unless Netflix also pays a ransom. Whoa! Look at this. Ransom. Extortion. Intimidation. Come on, folks. This is not Fat Tony's house of legitimate business here. First of all, I don't think they're using any of those words correctly. I don't think any of those words are being used in, in a, a manner consistent with their definitions. I ran some kid out of a neighbor's lawn. Is that how that one's supposed to be? Uh, maybe intimidation is used correctly. I think right. you know whether it's true or not. I think that one might be is the only one I could I could defend squarely. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no these these guys uh, are millionaires fighting with billionaires here. Essentially, it's not Fat Tony's house of legitimate business. It's Fat Tommy's house of legitimate business. <laughs> Reuters reports Adobe will close its research and development arm in China by the end of December. Adobe will maintain its sales presence in Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, and focus on market development in the region. Last week, Adobe reported its worst quarterly revenue for Asia in the last five years. Uh, I'm not asking you to be a mind reader here, Tom, but mm. it seems like there's a number of reasons that they would pull out of China. Number uh, the one that I, the moment I read this, I was like, well, it's got to be over the piracy because uh, uh, Adobe is notorious about trying to crack down on piracy of its own products. You know, that's the reason to move to, to uh, Adobe Cloud, Creative Cloud, and so on. Uh, I figured it was something like that, but then I start reading this article and it talks about, no, it's because Snowden revealed uh, American spies or some reason. Is this a security thing? Is this a piracy thing? Yeah, there was, there was a source who told Reuters anonymously that part of the reason was because of China's policy of intimidating U.S. companies in retaliation over spying. Uh, honestly, that really sounds like a, a defense uh, to me. Adobe reported worst quarterly revenue for Asia in the last five years. Now that could be because of piracy. Uh, that could you, you could make a defense of that. It could also be that Adobe just isn't as relevant in the marketplace. Uh, it's, it's hard to say. I think like Apple and Microsoft, Adobe is probably feeling a little bit of a crackdown and a little bit of a, of a chillier environment in China than they've had before. But I wouldn't say that's the main cause for sure. Time for some news from you. Uh, these are submitted at our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com, as are many uh, of the stories you hear every day. But we always like to highlight a couple of them right here. T2T2 submitted the Polygon story that Blizzard CEO Mike Morheim said the company will end development of the rumored video game codenamed Titan. And today, Kotaku compiled everything it had heard about the game from various sources inside Blizzard. They're basically like... 
they canceled the game, so we don't really need to protect this information anymore, do we? It had apparently been intended to be a near-future Earth set after an alien invasion had been fought off. Players would choose one of three factions, work normal jobs during the day, that would be your crafting professions, uh, you could be an entrepreneur or a butcher, and then at night, you would turn into a superhero-like fighter against the other factions in a sort of a Team Fortress 2 style game. Morheim told Polygon they canceled the game because it just wasn't good enough. They, they weren't satisfied with how it, fun it was. Yeah, you know, the bummer is it's not even like they failed because the idea wasn't uh, massive or, or uh, ambitious enough. I mean, what a great idea it is, but especially seeing what happened with, uh, with Bungie's Destiny, which is getting, you know, lukewarm reviews and people essentially saying like, uh, no, you're saying it's not an MMO, but it is an MMO, and other people saying you're saying it's not an FPS, but it is an FPS. Um, you know, but essentially, at the end of the day, the main complaint seems to be that it's just grinding, and people just get bored of doing that same thing. I, I if anybody is going to do it, it's going to be like uh, you know, either uh, Valve or Blizzard are the ki kind of companies that'll just put the just at the end of the day wasn't good enough, and they can sit on the cash and fix it. Yeah, and frankly, uh, good on Blizzard if they didn't feel it was good enough, even after ten years of development, to just pull the plug and say, you know, we'll try something else. Yep. Uh, I hear that members of that Titan team are still together and working on something. So who knows what we'll see from Blue? I'll tell you what, man. Uh, and we've talked about this like on on all the different shows we've done. It's like uh, failure is never a, in a bubble. It always turns into you know, and is a part of shaping something better down the road. Yeah. Habituela Condolce passes along the CNET report that Boeing has partnered with a company called Liquid Robotics to make seafaring robots. That's right. Boeing wants to build robots that can surveil the open seas looking for drug traffickers and submarines or maybe drug traffickers in submarines because why limit yourself? Liquid Robotics is the company that built the Wave Glider SV3. It's a self-powered seafaring data center that can stay in the ocean for months at a time and with green researchers. So add Boeing for the military aspect and boot soldiers, Brian. Man, I got really excited until the first application was to hunt down people in a drug war. And I was like, Ugh, all right, yeah, whatever. Fine. There are people yeah, I was bringing about unverified scene that could be below grade. Uh, Think of it that okay. way. Uh, you don't want to give, we don't have time to get me started on this. So I say we move right along, sir. <laughs> all right. And that is a look at bad ibuprofen. It's past its date. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, kick off today's uh, main discussion story uh, with a call. Thomas O'Neill, who actually, I, I want to apologize, I usually don't do this. I did edit Thomas's call because he had two parts. One was about Blizzard uh, and the canceling of Titan, but the other, I think, nicely kicked our topic for today. Hi, this is Thomas O'Neill. I've been watching your daily tech news show, and I uh, just want to give some feedback on the iPhone in case you guys are still doing that. Uh, basically, uh, my buddy, he got the iPhone 6, and I heard a news article about this also, but uh, apparently the iPhone 6 is a little too fragile, and it bends in tight pockets. Um, there's been quite a few reports of that. Thanks, guys. I really enjoy the show on Patreon. Love you guys. Have a good day. Now, if I was Dr. Daisy, uh, and I'm 10 years old, and I go in to the doctor's office in Greenville, and I say, Dr. Daisy, my iPhone bends when I put it in a tight pocket. Dr. Daisy would say, well, don't put it in a tight pocket then, and charge me like $5, because it was- Is that, is that the equivalent of him, uh, of him saying like, well, don't bend it that way. You, yeah. you're, you're, folding, you're holding it in your pocket wrong. Right, exactly. Uh, here's, the, here's the scoop, all right? This started with reports on Mac rumors. There's a bunch of Twitter posts about it as well. People said, dude, my iPhone 6 Plus seems bent. Look at this, you know, and they're showing it a little warped. Uh, Unbox Therapy on YouTube did a comparison. They actually did an iPhone 6 Plus bending attempt where he like intentionally bends it and makes it bend uh, and then took a Note 3, which has a plastic case, not an anodized aluminum uh, case, and bent it a little bit, but was not able to bend it nearly as much as an iPhone 6 Plus. Russell Holly at geek.com uh, looked at his own iPhone 6 Plus and realized, hey, this wasn't bent when I did the review on it, but it seems to be a little warped now. I had noticed that. So now there's reports all over of iPhone 6 Plus is bending. You got to remember, this is anodized aluminum. It's a strengthened aluminum, but it's still aluminum, which is a bendable metal. It's 7.1 millimeters thick, and it's 5.5 inch screen means that it is more likely to bend. Cult of Mac put together a great pictorial 
of all the other phones that also have reported having bending. Samsung Galaxy S4, the iPhone 5S, the Sony Xperia Z1, the iPhone 5, which I can attest to having bent one, uh, the BlackBerry Q10, the HTC Evo, the Oppo, the iPhone 4S. Uh, so... Can you get this repaired at a Genius Bar? Uh, the Next Web actually contacted Apple support and said there is a test called a visual mechanical inspection that the device would have to pass. They didn't say what the test involved or what the tolerances were, but if it passed, your repair would be covered. If not, you'd have to pay for the repair. All right, let me give you a hint. A visual bendable ex uh, inspection or whatever it is. Bend it, Brian, bend it. A guy going like, uh, yeah, no, this looks to me like you sat on it, and so I'm afraid we can't replace it. Um, this is a really weird story because on the one hand, I want to say that this is the media blowing up a story out of nothing because, you know, a, a headline reads, aluminum bends, like, duh, of course. <laughs> However, on the flip side, uh, I will say that it is surprising that, that phones have gotten so thin and made of such um, a, a light material that they would blend or bend and whatever. Uh, and so... Um, Will it bend? Exactly. <laughs> That's got to be the new show. Uh, so I understand that the public would be surprised by this, because I was surprised by this. I understand that the news uh, the news is covering it. That's fine, too. I don't begrudge any of that. However, I am somebody who has dealt with this, who never keeps his phone in his pocket when he sits down, not because I'm worried about the phone bending, but because for four years, I've suddenly had earbuds in, and if you have your earbuds in and, and they're plugged in on the bottom, when you sit, you're going to torque that, you're going to break your earbuds. So, like the hygiene I developed is anytime I ever sit down, I always keep my pocket or my phone in my front left pocket when I'm walking, and then when I sit down, I take it out and I set it in my lap. That's always what I've done. So it's like uh, I guess I guess if you're not somebody who always has earbuds in, then this is news, and you have to change your habits. So I understand that. Yeah, and, and and frankly, that's what's going on here is people are getting used to having a, a bigger phone. 10 million people bought this phone or or at least 10 million phones were sold over the weekend, right? Oh, so a lot wait. more people have a 5.5 inch phone than have had one in the past, all yeah. at once, anyway. Yeah, and I find myself in the curious position of the, the phone I'm using right now is the traditional six and uh, I've got a six plus on the way. So I'm sitting here just terrified that the six plus I'm gonna regret having bought, but we'll see. But here's the thing. Okay, I, I think maybe there's a reasonable expectation that Apple could have informed people, hey, don't forget, this is a much bigger phone than you're probably used to because we see you have an iPhone 4 or 5, etc. Uh, if you're used to putting it in your pocket, which we know everybody does, uh, you, you remember that it, you know sitting in your pocket, it might be a little more likely to get bent, so be extra careful with it, right? But this is not a new problem. As the Cult of Mac said, big phones can bend. People with skinny jeans, we decided on the morning stream, are in the worst possible scenario for this because it puts the most pressure on whatever you stick in your pocket. And a lot of people who buy Apple iPhones probably have skinny jeans. I'm just going to guess on that, right? All right, look, as somebody who's wearing skinny jeans right <laughs> now, I'm offended, sir. And it's what kind of phone do you have? In my back pocket. Boom. Uh, no, and, and there is a tradition now when an iPhone comes out that it has to be perfect. And whatever flaw, and every device that comes out has a flaw, whatever flaw surfaces blows up into a big controversy. In 2009, the 3GS had a yellow tint to the screen. 2010, and Tate, you're holding it wrong. It, it might lower your reception a little bit if you hold it in a certain way. 2011, there was a yellowing screen controversy again. 2012 was MapGate with uh, with iOS uh, adding Apple Maps. 2012 was also the purple lens flare, which Apple only responded to by saying, well, you, you know, you might want to cover the, the phone then if you get the little purple lens flare when you take a picture. 2013, there was the motion sickness thing over iOS 7 and the, and the tilt shift. Uh, it was probably, 2013 was their biggest success. They didn't have anything really, really bad. 2014, it's the fact that it bends. Yeah, man, which to me, that's a triumph. It's like, look, uh, and you've heard me say in other contexts that the only time you have no problems is when you're dead. So all you want to do is trade up for a better set of problems through the rest of your life. Or, or your life. Or, or, or your life. <laughs> if you're hanging out with lice. Um, but the important thing is like, this is the best problem we've had. How rad is it that the phones are so light and so cheap and so big that you can bend them by hand, man? That's awesome. Yeah. Get bent. How does your iPhone... Apple should like totally lean into this. Like, I mean, how does your iPhone bend? Yeah. 
What you know? Do, you know what? Think about it this way. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, I don't know, you know, a Coke can that came out the other day. Look at this. I can bend it with my hand. <laughs> it doesn't say this is a poorly made cork Coke can is what it is. Here's the thing. I, you know, I, I try to strike a balance and say, yeah, maybe Apple could have done a few more things to alert their populace that this phone, because it's bigger, it needs to be treated a little differently. But I have bent an iPhone before because I kept it in my front pocket and it sat and it was wedged. Uh, and it didn't break, it just bent, so it wouldn't lie flat on the table anymore. Uh, and that's more likely to happen in a larger phone like this. So I, I think this is just our typical Apple outrage, uh, and we can now check off that box, you know, right with the .01 problems, the .01 software update problems that always happen. We got both of those out in one day. Isn't that great? For those of you guys playing Apple Bingo, take your free square. Congratulations. Yes. Uh, calendar for tomorrow, September 25th through the 27th is the Online News Association Conference in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, today, back in 1993, Broderbund Software released the game Myst for the Macintosh computer. It became a record-setting bestseller and helped popularize CD-ROM drives. I played a lot of Myst in Austin, I recall. I hated Myst. I felt jealous of the attention that it got, and mm. I felt like it was... You felt wrong. jealous? Oh, yeah. Well, because I was somebody who was playing uh, Warcraft and Warcraft oh, okay. 2 at the time. And it's like when you're trying to sell the idea of PC gaming to someone, they're like, oh, games on a PC? I love it. There's this one called Mist. You walk around in circles on an island. It's great. I'm like, Ugh. It was a puzzle. I love puzzle games. Uh, and also announced today, Tesco's Huddle 2 tablet will be unveiled on October 3rd. So if you're in the UK and you're a Tesco loyal shopper, you want to keep an eye on that. Our pick of the day comes from Rob Jennings, uh, possibly the shortest recommendation we've ever received from Rob Jennings, and I quote, LootCrate.com, a subscription service for monthly swag. It has different levels of boxes. That's all he said. Oh, wow. Uh, to, to elaborate a bit. <laughs> that, that may have been too short because it's like, uh, if I want boxes, I guess I'll go to them. Uh, what else is, is there? Anything? If you sign up for LootCrate.com, they'll send you a themed mystery box with a retail value of about 40 bucks or more. Uh, in August, the theme was Heroes. So you got a Groot bobblehead, some mini Ninja Turtles, a pair of Schwings, which are wings for shoes, uh, among a few other things. Monthly plan costs you $13.37 per month. Wait a nice. minute. It's like a significant number. Thirteen thirty-seven. Elite. Uh, plus $6 shipping and handling. You sign up for more months at a time and get a discount every month. One loot crater wins a mega crate, which has $750 worth of stuff. So check that out. If you if you like surprise things showing up at your house, you might want to check out lootcrate.com. Thanks, Rob Jennings. I'll vouch for that. Uh, we uh, Loot Crate was a sponsor for a few months on Scam School, so they sent me some loot crates, and I always enjoyed opening them. Nice. Send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. These are not paid promotions. These are just your picks and occasionally my picks. You can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. All right, let's finish with some messages of the day. BioCow, uh, a stalwart on Yo for me and also a um, stalwart in the chat room here, uh, sent us this phone message. Yo, Tom, it's BioCow in Only OK Silicon Valley. After listening to Patrick talk yesterday about Google versus other search engines, um, the only thing I could think about was that if the other search engines had a better product, then they'd actually have more market share. But then you brought up the fact that Google's the default search engine in so many browsers, and I'd never really thought about that before. And to be honest, that's probably a lot of the problem. But then the question is, do you go after Google for ponying up so much money to be the default search engine in all these browsers, or do you have to go after the browsers and force them to supply a list of search engines to choose from when you first install a browser? Just a thought. Um, insert standard closing here. Thanks. Bye. Uh, in, in just OK, Silicon Valley made me laugh. Good, a good one, BioCal. Uh, when, this is in regards to the Google EU regulation, Brian. Uh, and Patrick Beja pointed out yesterday that Google has a 98% market share. So what do you do to ensure a fair marketplace in that situation? Well, this is one of the, and, and again, I, I don't know nothing about nobody, but I remember reading an article at some point that says that it's not illegal to have a monopoly. Right. Illegal is to use your monopoly position in an unfair manner. So it's like it could be that Google just happens to be the best one, and that's why they have 98%. And, and I'm, I'm not even going to say that's impossible. Um, but certainly if they got there because they used their dominant position in order to force people to make them the default search engine on X, Y, or Z, then that would be 
illegal. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. The EU is weird. They're, I'm sorry, they're weird. This whole like forget about your past thing that they're doing on Google, like telling them to withhold links that are over seven years old or whatnot. I, I, I don't remember that story because I had to remove it. Okay, see, <laughs> and, that's, and and also removed is my interest in caring about the way the EU does their thing. I'm sorry, I'm just not well educated enough. Rich from lovely Cleveland wrote in and said, a while back I watched the 1997 Macworld keynote that marked Steve Jobs' return to Apple. Apple was at rock bottom and Jobs was trying to rally the troops and point a way forward. One of the major points was market focus. And the main question posed was, where is Apple relevant? Where is Apple still the dominant player? Which market segments? Remember, this is 1997. In the case of Apple, it was creative content and education. And in the following years, Apple completely zeroed in their focus on those segments, creating Power Macs for the former and the bulbous plastic iMac and iBook for the latter. This didn't win them a vast market share, but they dominated in those segments enough to allow the company to get back to via the luxury of exploring other markets. Why bring this up? Now, he says, it was my first thought when I saw the reviews for the BlackBerry Passport. It is an uncompromising business device that has no pretensions of directly competing with iOS or Android, unlike their previous effort with the Z10. It's such a remarkably focused device. John Chen is embracing their niche status as their business model. Of course, this is where the analogy with Apple ends. BlackBerry faces a very steep climb to profitability and relevance, and they've burned through a lot of goodwill that the brand had with fundamental mismanagement, although to be fair, so did Apple at the time. But if the company is to survive, it's this kind of bold and perhaps bizarre strategy that will allow them to do so. As someone who literally has no interest in the product personally, I find the Passport fascinating in its focus. Yes. Dude, yes, 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 a million times yes. This is the smartest thing. Either uh, uh, of the two of us, this guy, Rich, had the smartest thing we said, uh, said on the show. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'd say they go a step farther. They need to focus their brand not only on business, but specifically security. BlackBerry could make big noise by talking about the ways they don't cooperate with the NSA. If this was the securest device that you could get, for communicating online, uh, I think they would they they could do very very well. I think great insight. I think he's right from beginning to end. And and the fact that they are uh, allowing with Blend to manage across devices shows that they are interested more in your security and your management and your enterprise level. Uh, the fact that they have touch on the physical keyboard says we know you want a physical keyboard. You are BlackBerry niche but we're going to make it better. We're not going to just stop by continuing to throw chiclets out here. Uh, so they've got gestures on there. You can you can go next in your email. You can swipe to delete. Uh, this is, I, I think Rich is right. I think BlackBerry is showing like, we are going to double down on the people we know still want what we make, what we're good at. And then hopefully if we can stabilize, then we can move forward from there. Good stuff, Rich from Lovely Cleveland. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, finally, regarding Apple's desire to store customers' personal data, your boss, Chris, uh, my boss, Chris, writes in, I feel that regardless of any company's best intentions, any data in their possession is subject to the honesty of those in their employ. Larger companies introduce a greater probability that someone may misuse the information. I personally would not store data in this way. Besides, my memory needs all the exercise it can get. <laughs> uh, I, I'm with you, Chris, and that's why Apple's making a big deal of the things that are stored on your phone they can't even get to. So that that is a defense against what you're saying here. But the stuff you store in iCloud, they have not been as rigid to say like, yeah, you have the key to your iCloud stuff too. You can't get to that. I don't because I don't think that's true. Something like Spider Oak uh, is one of the few products out there that says, yeah, you have the key. Your stuff stored here, but we can't look at it either. Uh, so. You know, you need to see something like that from them to really satisfy somebody like Chris. And that, my friends, is the Daily Tech News Show. Thank you, Brian Brushwood. Man, Pleasure as always, my friend. Dude, it was fantastic. When do we get to talk about the fact that I watched Iron Man 3 with my 10-year-old this morning? Um, well, that's that's the on the Cord Killers show. Well, well I mean, I also I watched Fargo uh, episode four, and I figured we'd talk about that too. I, I'm watching all this content so you and I could talk about it. Well, yeah, and I, I watched Jodorowsky's Dune uh, documentary, which, I, but that's again, that's the other show. That's the Monday show. That's the Cord Killer show. 
All right, I know we're doing a bit right now, but I just want to ask you about the Dune documentary. That's all. I it's want. really interesting. I guess, I guess we'll talk yeah. about it on Cord Killers. We will time. absolutely. Cordkillers.com. It comes on uh, Mondays at four o'clock Pacific, seven p.m. Eastern, or you can get it anytime at Cordkillers.com. Anything else going on? Not uh, scam school wise. I'll, I'll tell you what, we are really gearing up. This is uh, uh, two years ago, uh, just before Christmas, we launched a little thing called Scam Stuff, which we called Gear for the Modern Rogue. If you're into scam school, if you like having clever stuff to impress your friends or whatever, uh, we, we built it and, and we had a fantastic Christmas last year. This year, we've spent the last two months like gearing up, setting up bundles. We are ready to explode this Christmas. Just file this away in the back of your brain you're going to want to buy gifts that are clever, that stand out from the pack, that feel like something different. I really think we're going to do the right this year at ScamStuff.com. <laughs> when you said explode Christmas, I just wanted to make Warren Christmas jokes, which is just, not right. Just explode <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> that fire to it. Uh, check it out, ScamStuff.com. And uh, thank you to our patrons, 4,293 folks. Not just patrons on Patreon.com. Uh, those are the 4,293. We super appreciate you. But also, an increasingly number, increasing number of folks are using PayPal. Uh, we got a big donation yesterday, and you know who you are. And we really, really appreciate all of the donations, large and small, uh, that help us make the show possible. So check out dailytechnewsshow.com slash donate. Uh, if you get some value out of the show and you want to give some value back, that's how you do it. Uh, if you don't get value out of the show or you just don't have any money, that's fine. You can continue to enjoy the show. We're going to keep making them. Uh, but we appreciate all the support, both financial and otherwise. You can find us all over the internet. We're like a, a sliced salami spread out on the sandwich that is the internet. Uh, our subreddit is dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Our phone number is 512-59-DAILY. That's a local call for you, Brian. It's an what? Austin number. 512-593-2459. And of course, you can listen to the show live at mobile.alphageekradio.com or on TuneIn Radio. Look for alphageekradio.com and visit our website, dailytechnewsshow.com. We'll be back tomorrow when Brecky Thomason will be our guest. See you then. Or at least talk to you then. You probably won't see you because I'll just see this camera. But I'll pretend well, like I'm looking at you. Talk to, you'll talk at them. Yeah. Well, I like to talk, talk with them. them. Talk to them. For more information about this and other shows, visit frogpants.com. Audio program so good, it's like you're there. Tom, I'm starting to think you got a future in this business. No, really? No, uh, I, I, I feel like you're. Do you mean smooth. that? I feel like you keep stuff afloat. You keep stuff on pace. You do a good job of communicating. You know when to get in, when to get out. Uh, yeah, you. Know, I'll tell you what, maybe one day this will turn into something for you. God, I hope you're right. Uh, it's, be, that'd be nice. That's my favorite. That's my favorite uh, <laughs> Mr. Show bit is when they go back to their uh, their guidance counselor who, as they have a show on, on HBO to, to uh, you know, to, to Bob Odenkirk and uh, David Cross, he's like, he's like, well, we have a show on HBO now. He's like, well, good for you. Maybe it'll turn into something someday. Yeah. God, you know, my guide, second time guidance counselors came up this week for some reason. And I remember, same guidance counselor, I don't remember her name, told my sister, you should become a secretary. And she's like, yeah, but I've got all these aptitudes. And, you know, we took this test. And she's like, yeah, but you should become a secretary. Let's, let's be honest. Right? Same, same, same guidance counselor, same aptitude test, looked at mine. It's like, you could be anything you want. Wow. I'm like, well, okay, but like, given the aptitude, like, what, what do you think I should go? What's my best bet? She's like, like I don't know. Pick whatever you want. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you got a penis, don't you? Yeah, it was basically <laughs> it, right? Oh, you're okay. You can be a secretary and I don't know what men do. <laughs> you can, gonna, you can I marry. need to go die now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like, can't even handle that. <laughs> it was 1984. Not that care. that's a defense, but just to put it in context. There were anyway. astronauts that were women at that point. Uh, well, yeah, I know. Fresh heck. That's true. That's just, it, right. it still floors I'm, me that I'm gonna, that happened. I need to go call all. Molly now. And uh, which, like, which, by the way, which, uh, by the way, speaking of women, like, I think my favorite part, because uh, I bought uh, uh, the, the Spoiler for next week's uh, Cord Killers. You know, I bought Iron Man 3 because it's not available for rental. And I was like, fine, yeah, let me just buy it. It was a good movie. And uh, 
peeking in here and there as and watching Penny watch it and like seeing her giddiness. Like there are so many sweet moments. I love the fact that Gwyneth Paltrow spends like as much time in the Iron Man suit as uh, as Tony Stark does. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Really enjoy that. No, it's such yeah. such a well put together movie. Yep. Um, awesome. Would you like some titles? Yes, definitely. Okay. The number one, I have voted for this title and really like it, is Will It Bend? Uh, simple. Uh, Letterman cool. reference. Uh, there is a TM next to it. I say we just zap that since it almost broke you the other day. Um, we've got Get Bent. Uh, we've got A classic. A classic. Uh, we've got Wait, comma, iPhone 6 isn't a flip phone, question mark. Um, we've got Titan Fail, which I quite like. Um, and... Wait, see, which one did you say almost broke me? Oh, having to put a trademark sign next to... Oh, no. that didn't. I mean, oh, now that I actually know how to do it. All right. Well, that's the... So it's Will It Bend... Uh, is the top vote getter. And then there are many, many others. <laughs> Uncle Tony I like Will It Bend. Because everybody knows what you're talking about. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly better than, than the other bendy things floating around the internet today. This is like that moment at the executive meetings where everyone looks to the CEO and we're just going to hold our breath like, what's he going to pick? Asia! <laughs> Good call, boss. You're number one. Uh, I think will it bend? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, Actually, you know what? Screw that. Now I just want the title to be Asia! <laughs> <laughs> Plastics! That's <laughs> When you said well, the boss, it, that's what it is. Wait, 40 Thieves said, will it float is a Letterman thing. Uh, oh, yeah, will it float is the Letterman thing. And that's right. he was referencing, will it blend? Blend. Yeah. No, that's, that's what I figured. The moment I heard it, I was like, oh, will it blend? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, well, that let, was, is that bef does that predate Letterman's will it float? No, okay. will it float, I think, is before yeah. will it blend. Yeah, okay. but in fact, will it blend might have even been a nod to will it float, but I it do certainly remember, had been influenced. I would that say. I, yeah, but I do remember that the moment the iPhone one came out, will it blend had one within 24 hours and blended it. Mm -hmm. in. Yeah, Aww. that was that was how will it blend made its name because they're like, oh my god, they blended it. How could they possibly do that? This magical new device. Yeah. Asia. <laughs> I did have a guidance counselor tell me that when I wanted to be, I forget what I wanted to be even now because I wanted to be so many things, but the, his exact quote back was, well, that's aiming a little high. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Seriously, like, <laughs> neither guidance now, fair, nor counseling. I was, bit, I was a bit of a slacker. I was one of those classic only did good in my good classes, but I think there are better answers. Yes. Like, I mean, and, a little bit high. Wow. You're aiming a little bit high. <laughs> You are neither guiding nor counseling yeah. at that point. You are just being a jerk. Yeah. Uh, boy. <laughs> I think it was aiming a little high for you to become a guidance counselor, personally. Yeah, right? Mm. I mean, low. <laughs> I, was uh, a pro I was a problem. I was a high school problem. Put good it for that way. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> um, oh. All right. So, all right. Well, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump off. It was love. Right, Beautiful people. Thank you, man. Bye, thank Appreciate you. it. You got a gang. See ya. See ya. <laughs> like clack. <laughs> I just saw that DVZ gun. Hi. -ya. Plastics. Um. Plastics. How old was this guidance counselor at the time, Nth Mike? The one I was oh. talking about was probably, I would guess, mid-40s? It's hard to, hard to tell when you're that age, but I think that's, that's probably right. Who are these? Look at all these terrible stories about teachers and guidance counselors. I'm telling covering. you, man, like, what is it about guidance counselors? It's one of the most pivotal 
I mean, put forth as one of the most pivotal things. Like, you must meet the guidance yeah. counselor, right? You couldn't get out of it. Oh. oh, this reminds me. Okay, so on your list of... Do you watch Louie? No, I don't. Okay, so I think you could watch this without ever having seen a Louie. But this the almost season finale of Louie this season is an hour and 20 minute like mini movie about Louie's experience like when he was in eighth grade. Uh -huh. It is by far, it's maybe one of the best things I've ever seen on television. I love a lot of television. Like it is stunningly like natural and real and painful and it involves teachers very specifically uh, and I, I cannot recommend it enough. Like don't even bother. It's a self-contained story. Go just watch it. Find it. I'm going to find the title because it's really magical. Uh, we, and Jeremy Renner's in it, kissing a cat. Oh, wait. He's the guy from Hansel and Gretel, right? Yeah, among other uh, more quality projects <laughs> uh, like The Avengers. It's one of my favorite jokes yeah. to identify someone <laughs> as their least it's flattering. Called, it's called Goodbye to Your Childhood. Uh. The episode uh, is called Goodbye to Your Childhood? Louis, yeah, Goodbye to Your Childhood, I guess. Uh, I think. Is it that what it's called? It is spectacular. I just watched it last night. It came out in June, which tells you how far behind we are. No, it's called In the Woods. Sorry. That's the headline of the article. It's called In the Woods, Parts 1 and 2. It is spectacular. Into the Woods. Yeah. Wait, no, not is, that. All right. I, I, I can... was need to watch it, and I am excited. I can highly recommend Jodorowsky's Dune or Hodorowsky or Jodorowsky, depending on which person they're interviewing in the documentary. Um, yeah, you got to, I rented it. It's five bucks on to rent the HD version from Amazon, but yeah. told, worth every dollar. Yeah. Talk about it more in Court Killers, but um, yeah, it's one I've been meaning to get around to watching for a while and uh, didn't know that much about him other than um, El Topo. Yeah. So I learned a lot about him in the course of it as well. I didn't realize that after Dune fell apart, he didn't make another movie until mm -hmm. 2013. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Did you know that? I did not know that until you just told me that. But that is, I know. If I had a big movie like that fall apart on me, I would not do it again either. Well, not soon, but wow, that's a long time. Yeah. I wonder what he did in the meantime. Direct commercials? Com comics. Comics. With Mo Moebius. Mm. <laughs> I'll probably should just say Mobius rather than try <laughs> to pronounce it the way they did. But. Um, Moebius. Yeah, Into the Woods episodes, parts one and two. Season Into the Woods. Episodes 11 and 12. You now have all the information, people. Um, oh, I don't want to send this email, Tom. <laughs> just send... Oh, Sending it. I'm sending it. They'll never, they won't mind. Just send it. It's fine. I'm sending it. I sent it. I sent it. Okay. God, I hate for asking for things. You and me both. I gave options. I gave Good. outs and yeah. options. Which Perfect. Is like, feel free to just you, say no. You're producing. That's what you do. Yeah. I know. Oh, gargleplex. <laughs> 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 Eileen's going to be on E. What? Well, she's going to be interviewed by them. We'll see if it That's actually makes awesome. it to the show. But um, yeah, she's very, very excited. I had to take several pictures of her in various outfits this morning. Yes. So that yes. she could review and consult with others. That is some serious stuff. Yeah. I have been known to receive text messages from a mutual friend of ours involving many outfits. <laughs> I think I probably know who that mutual friend might oh, be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about this one? Uh, okay. I'm p what? Are you sure you want to do this? Hey, wait a minute. What happened? What the fresh? Something got something in WordPress. Okay, I think it's all fine now. If you see a, a post for today's episode that just says deck, 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 refresh your browser, it should be fixed now. Will it bend? Will it bend? 
It will if you keep it in your rear end. I got that visual. <laughs> that terrible place to keep a phone. <laughs> yeah, first of all, pickpockets, right? Yeah. Am I absolutely. right? Absolutely. Am I uh, right? Second of all, the uh, uh, the bending thing. Yeah. Um. When I ha I was I tried out a pair of jeans that were skinny. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I guess they were skinny jeans. I don't know, uh, but they were too skinny. And I bent my iPhone five, and it turned itself off. Like, oh weird! It just like and and wouldn't turn back on. I was a little afraid that I'd broken it, and it's fine now. But it is slightly bent. Oh. Uh, I really bent my iPhone four in my pocket. Yeah, before, so. I. I don't. I just don't carry it in my pocket. But I have the benefit of a purse, so that's a big other deal. Yeah. Um, oh man, Step Guns has the best title. What? Too late, man, or is it? iPhone gets the bends. <laughs> I'm afraid it is too late, <gasps> at least for the for the MP3. Brilliant. That is pretty brilliant, though. <laughs> <Pete Master. laughs> is that what you're laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> yep, you might get cancer back there too. If ever there was a sentence in need of the word apropos of nothing. <laughs> Except that Meg is perfectly apropos of our conversation, too. That's the best part. Oh, my. <laughs> I don't know if anything could beat that today. Yes, Beatmaster just won the chat room. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, especially just what we're looking down and reading that. Yeah, like, like if boom. you were not listening to this right now. And... Just... Ass cancer. All right. Uh, that is it for this episode of the video. Goodbye. Stop it. Enjoy. Have a lovely day. We'll see you tomorrow.